What are you doing? I'm adding fuel to my truck. Fuel to your truck, absolutely. Hi, I'm Hydro and this is Dr. Crankenstein. Today what we're showing you is how to make a, a uh, fuel cell for your truck using distilled water, a mason jar, and some different parts that we'll tell you about in our video and also in our CD. So, just to show you how this works, first of all, uh, does hydrogen burn? How do we know? Because there's hydrogen cars on the road today. Already? Yeah. Did you know that Honda just released its first hydrogen car? And we also know that hydrogen burns because of the Hindenburg. Anybody remember that tragedy? A little place called Hiroshima. <laughs> Folks, we're pouring in distilled water into a mason jar. What we're going to do is use a process called electrolysis, and this is an electrolyzer, and we're going to go ahead and I'm going to stick the electrolyzer in the water, and what's going to happen is, I'm going to get Dr. Crankenstein in just a second, go around here, and switch the key on for me, and we'll show you how this works, Dr. Uh, you will. See all the bubbles coming up and you can see that the hydrogen is just making it really producing hydrogen right at this point. Now this funny thing that happens with this and that is that the water will eventually turn the color of tea and it'll be very dark brown. It's called Brown's gas and uh, what's happening is your hydrogen is going up because it's lighter than your oxygen. Your oxygen ends up going down. Now we use baking soda in this process and it acts as a catalyst and a filter. So after a while the enriched oxygen will actually be trapped in the baking soda and you'll actually see it accumulate at the bottom of the jar. That's not unusual. But it actually works very good for us. And for us we just build a little carrying case. We just drop it right down in there and it rides down the road fine. The jar is perfectly cool. Somebody said that looked like it's boiling water. No it's not. It is separating the hydrogen from the oxygen and we are porting that into the engine through the intake and it is being mixed in your air uh, fuel mix uh, right into and burns just like a, a different type of fuel and it burns more efficiently it gives you more horsepower gives you cleaner emissions did you know that honda has just released their first car i think we mentioned that earlier uh, first hydrogen car but they've been running hydrogen buses in places like Chicago for years now. Keith, you will just crank it up for us. As you can see, the engine's running, running fine. And what we're doing, we're just taking the oxygen and also the hydrogen out and allowing it to burn as an additive or a fuel additive, which increases the mileage. You can go ahead and cut it back, please. Doc, if you'll step out here, we've got a few questions for you. So, uh, Dr. Krankenstein, uh, have you had very much experience with uh, maybe alternative fuels other than gasoline or diesel? Well, yes, I have uh, LP gas and a biodiesel. I've put it on uh, trucks and cars before. Is that right? Uh, have, would you say your experience has been limited or uh, you've had quite a bit? I've had quite a bit of experience, you know, with LP gas conversion. In your opinion, will hydrogen hurt the motor as it's going through here? With the hydrogen in this water that we're taking out, will that hurt this motor? No, I, don't, I don't believe it'll hurt it at all because, you know, it's burning. It, it goes in there as hydrogen and it converts back over to water after it's burnt. So you're telling me that when we take hydrogen and oxygen and we mix them back and we, we take them apart, but then when we burn them, they go back to uh, back water. water. Back to water. It honestly sounds like the, uh, a, a perfect source of uh, energy. I, bl I believe it is. So if we could produce enough of this, in your opinion, would this car run on it by yeah. itself? Yeah, it would run on it by now, itself. Now let me, uh, let me explain that, that we are using this as an off-road experiment. And there's a couple of things that, that most people are familiar with. And, and are you familiar with nitrous oxide? Have you ever uh, seen a NOS system before? Yes, I've had some experience with NOS system. And um, 
what what is the effect of NOS on an engine? It gives it more power, more pep. It gives it more power, more pep. It uh, burns very hot, I understand. So with nitrous, you have to burn it a very short time because I understand it's a very hot flame and um, would melt down an engine. Is that correct? Yes, it would uh, melt down the engine if it, you know, for a long period of time if you kept pouring that nitrous to it, you're going to burn and melt down some pistons. And you don't see this as having the same effect as nitrous burning long period? Uh, no, because this here develops a cooler flame, you know. And so it's a, a slower burn, cooler flame, allowing it to be burned consistently all day without damage to the engine. Now what are some of the positive effects of using this system, say, as opposed to a carbon-based fuel? Uh, this system here, it, uh, it cleans out your engine, all the carbon, like on the pistons and on the valves, it, uh, it just dissolves it. it uh, this cleans your engine. Your engine runs smooth. And how long have you been uh, 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 there again? You said you were a mechanic for 30 years. Is that correct? Yes. Sir. Have you ever dealt with carbon buildup on pistons or anything else? Yes, sir. Uh, on car you know, we got a top engine cleaner that you have to dump down in your engine every so often to clean the carbon off the top of the motor. We've had uh, engine we had to tear it down because the carbon got between the valves and the uh, valve seat. And cause it to skip. And what was the easiest way you found to clean the carbon off of uh, pistons? The uh, best way is with, with water. You mean tell me that if we put water, uh, how did you do that? That exactly. Explain to me a little bit. We could, you could take water and just mist it into the carburetor, the fuel injection throttle body. And it basically cleans your engine out just like you, if you use that top engine. So this is nothing new? No, this is nothing new. It's been used for years. Wow. And uh, th didn't you tell me, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, you took a, a piston and actually set it in water overnight? Yeah. Uh, you use that as a method of cleaning Clean carbon it. as well? That's right. Now carbon, for those who don't know, is something that's a byproduct of the fuel that we use as far as gasoline. It builds up on pistons, builds up on the different parts of the car. Uh, is it a hard? Uh, is it hard to remove traditionally? Uh, yeah, wire brush, chisel. Okay. Uh, so the best way to actually remove carbon that you found is actually water. water. Right. And when you're using HHO, actually what you're using is a gas form of water, not not steam, but actually a breakdown of the different compounds, and then when they're burned, it's amazing. It goes right back into the water. So very positive effects of this with having uh, There again, folks, acts kind of like NOS, except you can burn it all day long with no damage to your instruments. Anyway, check, uh, you know, go to our website or, or get our uh, CD from whoever's showing you this video and uh, build one for yourself. You can build these for what, about $100? Yeah, about $100. So any car, just, just so I'm clear, any car, whether it's diesel or a car or a SUV, doesn't matter. If it's a combustion engine, uh, we can convert it to be a hydrogen hybrid. Is that correct? That's right. Hydrogen hybrid. You heard it from Dr. Frankenstein, and I'm Hydra. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the future. Come on, take the